This is Consenting Adults with Lena Wynn. I said, we can try. Because he had, uh, Adam had fisted me before, like in our. Uh, oh my God, us. you guys. <laughs> my guests today are a really sexy couple. I wish this was video. Although if this was video, they wouldn't do the interview because although they're very open about sharing their experiences in the lifestyle, they're not out. Adam is 40. He's a pilot. Very handsome. <laughs> Belle is 42. She's a writer. Beautiful. You guys should be like the poster children for swingers. And then everyone would oh, get geez. into it. <laughs> uh, they've been married 17 years, in the lifestyle for two years, three kids, you know, teenage years. And they both grew up Mormon. And now they're swingers. That's the best part of all this. Okay, you guys, let's get into this. Adam and Belle have a podcast that kind of documents their experience in the lifestyle. And we'll tell you uh, how to find them at the end of the episode. But you talk about growing up in the church and being, you know, taught these things. So you guys are kind of, would you call yourselves kind of late bloomers? Sexually, I wouldn't say that I'm a late bloomer. I would definitely describe Adam that way. I oh. think that was kind of the drive to get into the lifestyle, maybe because I did not uh, save myself for marriage as per the tradition in the mm -hmm. Mormon culture. You could say I was promiscuous. I broke the law of chastity. How dare you? I know. <laughs> Adam, however, was a pretty good boy. I mean, he wasn't a virgin when we got married, but he definitely didn't have a whole lot of experience. And, you know, being married to the same person years and years, it, it can get stale or boring or, I mean, really you just kind of outgrow what you've been doing. And there's so many things within the church. That, I mean, it kind of depends on who you talk to, but a lot of teachings frown on oral, they frown on anal, they frown on basically anything besides vanilla sex between a married couple. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't know about you, but there's only so much vanilla sex that I could have <laughs> that continued to be pleasing. Right. But you guys have been married 17 years, but in the lifestyle for only two years. So, I mean, you pretty much did vanilla for, well, I take that back. <laughs> <laughs> you did whatever, but only with each other for, you know, 15 of those years, right? Right. Right. So how did, I mean, what, what caused the, ooh, maybe there's something else out there that we can do? Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, pretty much. <laughs> so I was... Uh, commuting to New York uh, for my job. And the bedroom was getting a little bit stale. It was the same routine over and over. And some of my flight attendants were reading Fifty Shades of Grey. And of course, I questioned it. They blush. Well, I bought the book at the <laughs> bookstore and read it on the way home. And then he gave it to me and we proceeded to have a really fun book club. And that was kind of the the gateway drug into <laughs> uh -huh. anything other than vanilla sex. Right. But there was a lot of shame involved in just going that far. We were living in Utah at the time and to hear everyone talking about it. I mean, you'd hear it over the pulpit from people about how it was pornography and that it was evil. And really, we kind of used the book as an instruction manual, a how to and we you know, explored with each other, but it was kind of laden with a little bit of, is this still okay? Mm -hmm. We still had a vanilla vi mindset, even though we were kind of breaching that line. But it was still just with you guys, right? Just you two? Yep. Still just us. So, so I mean, are, what, are we talking about like tying each other up or? Yeah. Tying each other up. I mean, it was pretty light BDSM. Uh, I don't know if you've ever read the books or seen the movies, but, um, you know. Well, here's the thing about me. I, a lot of so many of my friends have. I just heard that <laughs> I heard that it wasn't written well. And I'm such a like, I, I didn't think I could really stand it if it wasn't written well. Uh, well, <laughs> then you probably won't be able to stand it. <laughs> right. And so then I never read it. Um, but I hear it being brought up all the time as the thing that got people to experiment. Because, right. you know, seeing it up on the screen and people are talking about it made people feel like it was okay to maybe experiment a little. I mean, yeah. And so fun. that's what happened with you guys. <laughs> well, yeah. And we continue to have those uh, exploratory 
kind of aha or, oh, look, look what's out there. I mean, our, I would say our kink level is pretty, you know, low. We actually haven't peeked through the door very far within, as far as kink goes. I mean, there's everything that you can imagine. What did you guys consider kinky? What did you do that you thought was, whoa, this is, we're, we're, (laughs) honey, we're getting kinky now. Uh, Bondage, Mm -hmm. light impact play. Uh, Anal was kind of off the table as far as the church goes, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that was pretty bad. So we went into the, the anal category and we discovered all these things that felt good to be blindfolded and have the sensory deprivation was eye opening. Mm-hmm. So many layers to it too. I mean, you, you try something once and you're like, Oh wow. I've, I've never experienced an orgasm quite like that. And then you want more, but you almost mm-hmm. have to keep upping the ante to keep achieving those mind blowing orgasms. So it kind of promotes you to keep searching. Isn't that part of what the church is saying is that it's just, it's going to turn you bad that if you do something, it's going to make you want more and you're, it's going to get, quote, worse. Right. Well, I mean, you could say that they're right. <laughs> they right. Are. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, that that's why they want you to, to be chaste and moral is because once you start down that path, I mean, it's, it is a very enticing, I mean, it's fun. Uh, our relationship has been more fulfilled, not just sexually, but our interpersonal relationship with our our kids and everything we're we're less judgmental we're more open uh, to things that are different i would say that i have gone uh, politically completely conservative on what i would say was okay between two people to almost a complete you know 180 where i'm like well as long as it's between consenting adults then everything's game. That would be a great name for a podcast. It would be. <laughs> <laughs> Which was the hook when <laughs> when Adam said, uh, there's this new podcast, you should listen to it. And he's like, it's called Consenting Adults. I was like, yep, that sounds like it's right up my alley. <laughs> yeah. How do you get from the stuff that you do only with each other behind closed doors to adding other people? I mean, what? how do you get there? We started fantasizing about it. I oh, I had this best friend that uh, she's still my my good friend, but I always joked that if our marriages didn't work out, we'd just run away and be lesbians together. <laughs> and so Adam was always when we moved back in the area where she lived, he was always kind of teasing me about fulfilling that pledge, and how we doesn't really have to be divorced. For something like second. that to happen. Which, was she just like a best friend and you made that joke? Or did you find her kind of hot? Well, so oddly enough, her mother had taken her to a swingers club in Las Vegas when she was a young teenager. So wow. she had told me uh, all the stories and uh, just jaw dropping things to me. And, and I was very, very Mormon at that point. I took the information in and silent, ju- silently judged her. And then went along my way, but it's always hanging out there in the back of your mind. Mm -hmm. And and yes, she's very hot. And I had seen her breasts before and, you know, we'd gotten drunk in Vegas and body shots and all that kind of stuff that kind of leads to light fondling, but nothing, nothing serious. I guess you could say. Sin City. (laughs) Sin City. Everything happens in Vegas. Yeah. Right. So we so we started fantasizing about adding her into our sex play as we were having sex. And, you know, that was hot. It was hot to fantasize about having, you know, a third person there. And we would describe to each other which positions we would do and, you know, just different scenarios and Mm -hmm. just the visual and the, the dirty talk that you're able to achieve that fueled our sex for a while, actually. So when we moved here, we kind of had a falling out with the church. My heart just wasn't in it. It was making me very unhappy. And I was just feeling very condemned, very depressed, and very much just feeling like I was in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. So I stopped going to church. Uh, Adam followed me. I didn't ask him to stop, but, um, you know, he stopped going to church as well. And we, I started feeling this sense of normalcy again. Then Adam took a college course that really delved into the origins of monogamy. 
it kind of opened your mind into, okay, this is the origins of marriage and monogamy and religious control. And then Ashley Madison. Mm -hmm. And because we were in that mindset, we sat up in our kitchen and had a conversation about humans. And are we really supposed to be monogamous? Well, we couldn't really believe the sheer volume of people that got caught in that Ashley Madison scandal. Right. And then you felt, I mean, some, because some of them are notable people. Yeah. Yeah. And it lots made of it more real, right? Right. Lots of other LDS people. And we were just kind of a little stunned. But because we had stopped being very judgmental in the years of since leaving the church, where our hearts and our minds were just more open to accepting people who decide that that's right for them. And so we had some just really honest conversations about it. And so it ended up being really hot. <laughs> now, when we say I was straight laced growing up, I didn't even have a drink of alcohol till I was 35. Yeah. Wow. You know, I was I was as straight of an arrow as you can get. The Mormon church really hits on young men with no masturbating. So you didn't. Yeah, so I didn't. I, I was always straight laced. And I found myself being really just uptight. And actually a little bit pissed off that I missed on <laughs> out on all the college years of partying. I, I have to ask you, they pretty much told you you should not masturbate. That's bad, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But as a growing teenager with raging hormones, or or did they control your hormones too? <laughs> well, I did. I mean, I'm 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 really so, self disciplined in everything I do. So I just I developed. Well, wait this. a second. But what about? And I just have to get graphic. But what if you know? What if? What if you have like a raging erection? Do what do you do? You you wouldn't touch it. <laughs> yeah, honey. What did you do? <laughs> Th thankfully, we got married really young. <laughs> I mean, so you so you did not you did not masturbate? Did uh, you I, try it once? Come on, Adam. I, I didn't. I, I mean, I tried a few times. Yes. And he felt ridiculous. I I felt uh, even when we were married, and Belle was like, "Hey, I want to see you masturbate." I just felt ridiculous. And it doesn't even sound sexy when you say it like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it felt awkward, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So it sounds like you grew up at least so straight and so square. And I don't, I don't mean that in a, a derogatory way, but you grew up that way so that these fantasies actually kind of held you through that time. Like for, for most people, fantasizing for six years Sounds like what I, I, it just doesn't sound like it would be enough, right? But for you guys, right? It was different enough that it kept you satisfied for that well, for that long. Yeah, I mean, it, the spell wears off. No matter right. everything that you try, it seems like eventually you need something a little bit more. Oh my god, I can't wait to see you guys in like five years. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so let's get let's get to the good part. So if you've done all this fantasizing, it's been over six years. Um, how did you go about like jumping in? I, I know that you went on some websites like everybody does, right? Everyone who right. wants to go into the lifestyle, they start checking out all these websites. Yeah. Um, did you meet people on there? Adam actually found a house party, although we didn't know it was a house party because we didn't know there was such thing. It right. built itself as a club. He sent an email to the host and was like, hey, we are thinking about coming to your party. Do you have, you know, is there room? And you had to send in your height, weight, and a picture of the two of you to, you know, see if you can gain access to this club. So we wow. did, and they immediately responded with, you're in. I mean, driving up, we were, I was kind of like, this feels awkward. This is obviously not a club like we were thinking about when you go to a club or a bar that has a dance space. It, it was right. a house oh. and it was a very old house. <laughs> and it was very awkward to be in that space uh, with people who were half naked. Oh. And can you walk me through it? Like you go to the house. I mean, do you knock at the door? Is the door open? What do you see? They had a folding table set up with, I kid you not, a paper plate of defrosted shrimp sitting on ice that is in a tinfoil pie tin. 
<laughs> and I was like, like, not your speed, right? You're right. I was like, what the? <laughs> I don't, I'm going to try not to swear because I don't know. <laughs> no, you can swear. But, okay. I was like, what the fuck did we just walk into? <laughs> Before we continue, I want to make sure that you know about the special that's going on at adamandeve.com. Uh, shop and then at checkout, put in my name, L-E-Y-N-A. You're going to get half off of just about everything they have on their website. You're also going to get six free movies, free shipping, and some free gifts as well to make things a little bit sweeter. So remember, Lena, L-E-Y-N-A at checkout on adamandeve.com. The host was l- not really in our category of attractive Mm -hmm. Um, or in our age bracket, uh, but very kind and welcoming. And that was about as warm as we felt the whole time we were there. We walk into the rest of the house. You walk right into the kitchen. There were, uh, there's a kitchen Island and there's a couple, there's some couples standing around it already. And the ladies like cross their arms over their chest and look me up and down like, girl, no. I was like, (laughs) oh, they hate me. (laughs) They hate me. (laughs) <laughs> and I was, uh, I was, I didn't stop shaking the whole time we were there. No, she didn't. <laughs> it was. That's an, that sounds awful. It was very awful. We toured the house. It was very old and not remodeled. It had very long shag carpet in the basement that. Oh wasn't, no. I mean, the mattresses were on the floor. There <laughs> didn't look like there was a vacuum that had run along the edges in the last decade. Oh, I was. Gosh. And I'm kind of a neat, clean person. Mm -hmm. I could not imagine taking my shoes off in that basement, let alone being naked. (laughs) Right. (laughs) It was horrific. (laughs) One of the things that couples fear when getting into the lifestyle is the stereotypical swingers. Swingers. I was going to say you are describing what most people not in the lifestyle think swingers parties are like. Right. Right. We need to say that's it. That is not how the lifestyle is at all. We just picked really unluckily. <laughs> unluckily. Right. Well, so right. we have since learned uh, after going on a, on a date with couples, uh, instead of just going straight to a party, that you should not go to a house party that you don't know somebody who's going, who can't vouch for what you're walking into for those reasons. And we've heard some pretty good horror stories about house parties in general. And, and so we just kind of have that mantra. We, we just don't go into an unknown house party. So why didn't that, that didn't turn you off to the whole idea? That didn't did. freak it, you out? It, 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 did, it did for two for, years. <laughs> yeah, for two years, we Oh we my goodness. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I, I was getting looked up and down by a single guy who was making me very uncomfortable. And uh, I mean, no one was approaching us to talk. We were too terrified to talk to anybody else. And I just looked at him and I was like, I, I wanna go, I wanna leave. So we left, we went back to the hotel uh, Adam had already taken some swingers insurance, which we unwittingly, we didn't know that that was swingers insurance. <laughs> we just started well, using it. What is, for, wait, I've never heard of this before. You've never heard of swingers insurance? Well, it's the insurance? little blue pill. <laughs> it's Viagra. Oh, you guys, see, that's how square I am. I'm like, wait a second, they sell swingers insurance? <laughs> okay, so you took swingers insurance. So are you, are you like walking around now with a heart on? Uh, yeah. No, that's that's not how it works exactly. But uh, well, I was though. <laughs> he was hard because- <laughs> They had porn on a big screen and there's all these half naked ladies and, you know, and he's interested somewhat more than I am. But, you know, we had, we had some rules going in that if one of us wanted to pull the plug, we would leave. And, and so we did, we left, we went back to the hotel and we pretty much, I got drunk and we just fucked (laughs) <laughs> the rest of the night until we passed out. Well, you you forgot the part where we stopped at a sex uh, sex store. Oh, that's the way right. Back to the hotel, <laughs> we found a sex shop <laughs> and popped in there and got uh, some toys, the different like what do you call them, cock sleeves? And- yeah, we, oh. we bought like a, a cock ring and sleeves, and I think just a, a whole bunch of random stuff. Like that. Yeah, what's a cock sleeve? It's a it's a sleeve that's textured that you can put over your erect penis that makes it more girthy or more textured or whatever. You can get them that have, uh, that are basically a penis extension, uh, or you can get them that just go over. Yeah, so the tip of your penis is head base, is, yeah. is sticking out, but it is over the, the, your shaft basically. And that was exactly the second time we had ever been in an adult toy store. 
Oh, wow. Right. <laughs> so we were walking around going, well, hey, let's try this. And it was a shady, shady establishment. <laughs> Oh, you guys are striking out. We struck out that first night yeah. for sure. So that's yeah. why it took us two years to even uh, decide to try again. We didn't know how to really start a conversation with another couple for the purpose of dating. Uh, we just kind of had to fumble our way through it. Uh, we finally decided to meet a couple for uh, dinner. And they were really lovely people that uh, we liked them. We were just very terrified of taking that next step. Like they were height, weight, proportionate. They were intelligent, nice people. They were very interesting, but they weren't like someone we were, we were like, yes, we, we mm-hmm. want to get together and play with you. It was just kind of a, you know, it, it would have been a, uh, what do you call it? A scarcity mindset. But I mean, we didn't even know it was the scarcity mindset then, but it just would have been a baptism by immersion. <laughs> Which just we ended do up it. doing anyway. <laughs> okay, so that's strike two. <laughs> that was strike <laughs> right? two. Strike two. Yep. And we didn't do anything else for probably six months. And then we went to a club, uh, a local swingers club, an actual club. And met a couple that started talking to us about a threesome that they had had. And that was the first time we we were like refocused on, you can just have a threesome. You don't have to completely swap. Mm. And that mm-hmm. really piqued uh, our curiosity some more. I felt a little bit more comfortable with the threesome idea, but I really worried how Adam would react to it. Uh, I didn't trust that he would react well. I didn't trust myself that I wouldn't uh, get caught up in it. And because uh, I've. Well, are you it. thinking like with another man or are you thinking with another woman? Well, obviously, I was thinking about two penises. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> it's not obvious. Uh, right now, I mean, I would say that I have gone from being completely straight to being bisexual to being more of a bi curious person. Um, I love playing with other females um, in the process of having sex, but it's not something that turns me on so that I focus on it. It's a slippery slope, Belle. It's a slippery (laughs) slope. Um, Okay, Adam, what did you think about threesomes at that point? I was the one that did the shopping and found the Mel that kind of fit her bill for uh, someone that she would want to have a threesome with. Mm-hmm. And so I set up a a meet and greet or dinner with him and we went. Yep. Hold on. Before be, before you describe the meeting and, and how that went, help me understand how a man who grew up like not even touching himself <laughs> was okay with the idea of bringing another man into the bedroom and sharing your wife with him. It was... A product of fantasies for years, for six, seven, eight years at this point, uh, we had talked about another Mel. We had talked about threesomes. We, I, I had told her in the, in the course of having sex that I would love to see her fucked by another man. Yeah. And so that was really my, I wasn't after this to just sleep with other women. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I, I wasn't using the lifestyle to go sleep around at work or do anything like that, because there's always plenty of opportunity for me to do that. It was about watching her receive pleasure from someone else. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you set up a date with a single male. He was very young. Uh, it, that was the most uncomfortable part for me was his youth I mean, he was an adult, but for me, I was like, oh my gosh, I have kids who are closer to your age than you are to mine. And Mm. it was a little uh, nerve wracking. And I was Mm -hmm. worried that I'm like, I've had three kids, man, as are you going to be like, I'm worried that you're not going to be turned on by this post baby mom bod. And Mm. he was like, oh, I love, I love older women. I love married women. And, and uh, kudos to him. You would not guess that he was 25 during the experience. He was just, uh, for lack of a better word, a pro. <laughs> oh, so he like he he knew what he was doing, huh? So he had 
been in a relationship with another couple or with a girlfriend who brought other people into the, their bedroom. So from a young age, he had been non-monogamous. And so he was just kind of uh, very natural. Yeah. Good looking? Uh, yes, attractive, very tall. That was kind of my, the thing that really ropes me in is I, I'm a sucker for heights. I love tall guys. And Adam is only 5'10". <laughs> So I, when I can, I still love you, Adam. <laughs> Thank you. I love him too. But as a tall woman, when I put on heels, I tower over Adam. <laughs> I'm mm. just tall. And so being with somebody who is uh, very tall is just part of that fantasy fulfillment. Um, it's very, it's just different. I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. So when I'm experiencing other men, I like to experience different because I like my experience I have with Adam. I want to see what else is out there to partake of and just see how I like it. Mm -hmm. So I like the tall guys. He had a very generous appendage, which uh, was very fun. (laughs) (laughs) You're so proper, (laughs) Belle. I know. That is my upbringing. I have still struggle to say uh, penis and and cock. (laughs) Okay. Uh, how yeah. did you know he had a um, pictures? Oh, so you already knew he was well endowed even before you met him. Well, that's kind of how he advertised himself. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that was oh, his screen okay. name. Is I can't say his actual screen name, but it was like Monster Dick Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's a, there's a reason why there's an average penis size. Is most men are average. Mm-hmm. There, you don't find a ton of men who are well above average. Uh, I would say that the range is always average to below. So, right, you know, guys who are very proud of themselves kind of lead with that. I'm assuming you guys played. We did. So I wasn't necessarily sold on playing with him. Uh, Adam was kind of like, "Come on, we just got to do this." He's like, "Just rip the bandaid <laughs> off. Let's do it." <laughs> And I was so nervous. I, my h- heart was in my throat. I have a, some anxiety issues. So I was getting like the black cloudy vision. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and I really needed Adam for that extra push. Mm-hmm. And, and so we did, we went stopped by the pharmacy and got some extra large condoms and <laughs> went straight to the hotel. He met us there. I had some little nips of alcohol in my purse. I needed some liquid courage. So I pounded one Uh. of those and he knocked on the door, you know, we let him in and we chit chatted very briefly and then went, got straight to business. And it was, it was a pretty exhilarating experience. Uh, I felt really comfortable with it almost immediately. Adam was like, damn, baby, you look like you've done that before. (laughs) Okay. Well, wait a second, Adam. Yeah. You're going to need to describe to me how this started because you guys are complete newbies, Mm -hmm. okay? You're in this hotel room. The young man walks in. You chit-chat for a little bit, but then how do you get things started? Who made the first move? He asked to use the bathroom, and when he went in, I just started kissing her neck uh, and touching her, and she relaxed almost immediately because it was just her and I, and as we were making out, he came out and sat on the other side of her and started kind of mimicking what I was doing to her. And there was a point where her eyes just rolled back in her head and she tilted her head back. And from that point forward, it was game on. And it just kind of (laughs) flowed. It was really easy. Uh, They both undressed me in tandem, which was really hot. And the whole experience just really felt uh, very natural right up until actual penetration. <laughs> and uh, well, so Adam wanted to do DP, which is double penetration. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> we were all Who in. Who are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, okay. This, this has been a fantasy of mine for a long time. So, oh, it's a fantasy of yours. Yes. Yeah. And we had done like toys yeah, you know, Adam and okay. a toy. I, I'm dying over here because I, <laughs> I see the Mormon background and I see you being like, wait, what? <laughs> How do you make this leap? How do you go from being... My mind's been naughty for a long like, time. Very conservative Mormon to to this. 
Right. Yeah. But I guess it's because um, I don't understand the moment. So, you know, like, so you're all, I assume you're sitting on the bed. Yeah. You're, well, you're both, ki- they're, they're both kissing you and touching you. But like, so how do you go from that to, hey, let's DP? It, well, it didn't, it didn't work quite like that. Yeah. It, okay. it progressed through um, oral. He went down on me. Uh, Adam was kissing my body and he was going down on me. And then I went down on him. That was really, really fun. And then uh, we were kneeling on the bed, facing each other, uh, kissing each other and uh, kind of doing a a hot dog position where his penis is basically just rubbing between my legs, but he didn't have a condom on. And so Adam was getting like really worried that he accidentally... <laughs> penetrate me. And I, I'm thinking there's no way I'm going to accidentally be penetrated by this gigantic <laughs> cock. <laughs> but he was really worried. And I, I was looking at his face and he, I, I could see that he was a little bit worried. So I started going down on, on him again. And Adam got closer to the bed. I kind of crawled over and started going down on Adam. And he was just touching and rubbing and fingering me from behind. And, and then I don't where There was that point where he wanted to penetrate you. Right. And he put on the condom and I really wanted to watch this. I wanted to watch the moment that another man penetrated my wife after so long. Right. And so I sat back and watched as he entered her and that was the turn on. Yeah. That was Um, pretty hot. They fucked for a little while. And then I suggested, because I knew it was a, a fantasy of hers uh, suggested if um, she wanted to try DP or not. Yeah, and we talked to him, and he he was game. But I was a little too nervous. Uh, there's certain things that you need to do to prep for anal, and I hadn't done any of those things. And I was like, this is this is not <laughs> this is not what is going to work right now. What are some of those things? Well, there's like you can you can wash yourself out, or I tend to eat um, a little bit less ahead of time so that it can be nice and clean. There's like injectors that you can inject lube into yourself so that you just so it's it's easier to take a penis right. um, that way, and, and it just kind of just being clean and realizing that it, everything is going to be clean is uh, mm-hmm. a mental boost. It's, it's sure. For me, I'm like okay, every it's not going to be gross. Cause for me, I'm not into a body fluid thing at all. Uh, mm-hmm. Any kind of body fluid immediately turns me off and I'm out. <laughs> I didn't want it to ruin the situation to have any kind of whoops happen. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I just, I told him, I'm like, I, I can't, I'm not ready for that. And then he, he was like, well, what about DV, which is double vaginal penetration? <laughs> oh, with, and, the, with this guy with this yes. horse <laughs> yeah and uh, you were I'm, like sure <laughs> <laughs> I said we can try because he had uh, Adam had fisted me before like in our uh, oh my god us. you guys <laughs> <laughs> and so I knew I could possibly I might be Mormon I might be Mormon <laughs> Wow, all these little surprises just kind of pop up. Oh, yeah, by the way, he, he's fisted me before. I've never talked to anyone who's been fisted before, so. Well, not anally, not anally fisted. Right, well, <laughs> no, I didn't even know people did that. Um, <laughs> yes, you uh, do. Okay, so let's talk about, can we talk about that for a second? Sure, yeah. yeah. So uh, whose fantasy was that? Like before you ever tried it, whose fantasy was that? Well, so that wasn't really a fantasy. Um, When I was pregnant with our first child, there was just like some different things that would hurt. And so he would use his his hands. He just, instead of penetrating me with his penis, he would uh, use his fingers. And then he'd just start using more and more fingers. And the more I enjoyed it, the more he would try to work his hand more and more in there. And I don't know what, what gave me the idea, but I was like, hmm, actually, this might actually help in the child person process. <laughs> we were, uh, we were what? I don't know. I was a dumb kid. Three and 25 at the time. I was this 24. Was we first married. Yeah. Wow. And it just, I don't know. We just kind of naturally progressed to fisting. And then after, you know, when I wasn't pregnant, that wasn't actually something that I really enjoyed anymore. I was like, okay, that hurts. Oh. And okay, oh. I would like to recover all my Kegels and everything like that. So 
Uh, but, but you enjoyed it then. I did enjoy it then. Um, Interesting. And, you know, I've had three kids uh, and I, I do work really hard on those Kegels, but I knew that I could probably do the double vaginal penetration. I just, um, I wanted him to go really slow and use lots and lots of lube. <laughs> and, and so he did. Could you like talk me through how this happened? So he was laying on the bed and I was straddling him. Unfortunately, we are out of time for this episode. Hate to keep you hanging on like that. Actually, I don't. You're going to have to tune in next time for the rest of the story. And I'm telling you, this couple is just getting started. I would say he had the perfect penis size. It, he was not necessarily super girthy, but he was it was long and the quality of erection was really pleasing. And he kind of had a, a wayward hook to his tip. That's next time on Consenting Adult.